Hi, I'm Corinne McLean. I'm the director at the Azel Memorial Library, and we're here in our team room to film this month's video of book hooks. And the first book I want to talk about, these are all nonfiction items, um, is The American Vice Presidency from Irrelevancy to Power. And it is by Jules Whitcover. Now, there are a million books out there on the American presidents. You've got biographies, histories, pretty much every president has one or two autobiographies. But there's not a lot of books and histories on vice presidents. Um, I think vice presidents tend to go overlooked once they're out of office. So I was really excited when this book was released. Uh, just recently. Now the book is 520 something pages so it is very long but it's totally approachable because what the author did is he took all 47 vice presidents and broke it down into chapters and each chapter is an average of like 11 pages. So it's actually not a lot of information on each one it's just the overall culmination of the chapters really adds up. So you could choose to read it cover to cover or you could just pick and choose which vice presidents you want to know about. And it gives a little bit of a biographical background. It give, talks about their um, time in office and some of the achievements that they um, made or maybe some of the lesser achievements that they didn't do. Uh, so if you're looking to learn more about our vice presidents, this is a great, great book. And it's The American Vice Presidency by Jules Whitcover. Next we have a book called The Innovators. And this is, um, the subtitle is, How a Group of Hackers, Geniuses, and Geeks Created the Digital Revolution. Now, this book is by Walter Isaacson. He's the one who wrote that really famous Steve Jobs biography that came out in 2011. And what he's done is he's taken some of the other power players in digital history. And it's not just modern day. It goes all the way back to uh, the late 1800s. Actually, I think it was 1840 with, um, Ada Lovelace, she was Lord Byron's daughter, and she's the one who really pioneered computer programming, um, which I had no clue it went back that long. And then he talks about some of the very notable figures, Bill Gates, Steve Wozniak, um, Tim Berners-Lee, Steve Jobs, but then a lot of characters and people that you may have heard of or may have not heard of, um, Vannevar Bush, Alan Turling, Doug Engelbart, and Larry Page, and other people. And he doesn't just give a history of their, you know, how they impacted the digital world. He talks specifically about how their minds work, what makes them so creative, and how they've really been innovative when it comes to teamwork and groupthink. Now, if you've read books like Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, you already have kind of an idea of what makes people like Steve Jobs or um, Bill Gates special and how they really kind of fit in that really nice niche of I was ready to come out at the right time in the right field and make an impact. So I think this is a really good follow-up to some other books that have come out um, about leadership and um, making an impact in the world. And again, that was The Innovators by Walter Isaacson. Next we have a book that is just juicy and riveting and even though it's nonfiction, it's kind of got that true crime thriller kind of aspect to it. And it is Empire of Sin, Sex, Jazz, Murder, and the Batter, Battle for Modern New Orleans. And it is by Gary Christ. As you can see, I'm terrible at remembering titles and authors. Um, but this book is great. It covers th 30 years of New Orleans history from about 1890 to 1920. And even though the author covers just a broad 30 year history, he does a really good job of taking stories of individuals. Um, there's some mafia people, there are some prostitutes and, you know, lesser um, beings in the, uh, in the underworld. There's um, crime lords, there's a serial killer, there's even some kind of shady politicians. And he takes these pictures, he adds in the culture and the jazz and the musicians of the era, and he ties it into this whole big picture of New Orleans so you get a really good grasp of what happened in New Orleans that helped it become what it is today. And it's a really riveting read. This is one that probably won't put you to sleep right away, like some nonfiction books. So if you're looking for um, a really nice history book that's actually kind of exciting, this is a good one for you. Next, I wanna talk about a book that may not be for everybody, but for those who need it, it's gonna be really, really helpful. And this is called Coming Back Together. Um, it's a Guide to Successful Reintegration After Your Partner Returns from Military Deployment. It's by Stephen L. Sayers. He has a PhD. 
And what this does is it outlines some of the common challenges that couples and families face once someone comes back from military deployment, and then it gives them some guidelines on how to compromise through those challenges and um, some resources on what to do. Um, it's, it's pretty shocking. Families who have had one or more parent come back from military deployment are three times more likely to have child abuse or neglect in their homes, and that's not just by the person who was deployed. It could be from the parent who stayed home as well because they face great stresses as well. Um, veterans and those who were deployed and their families are also more likely to have some of the substance abuse in their family and more likely to get divorced. Um, so what's really changed over the years is in the past, you know, World War II, Vietnam, they really focused on veterans and their support when they got home. Nowadays people are realizing there's just as much stress on the families, the marriages, and how to reintegrate back into that lifestyle that they had before they left because things have changed. So this book is pretty thin. It's You can see it's not a lot of pages, so it doesn't go into all these psychological analysis or anything like that. It just gives a nice overview of here's some steps you can take and it has some really good resources in the back of the book to give people um, further steps that they can take to get help. So this also might be a good read, even if you didn't have a spouse who was deployed, maybe if your son or daughter or parent was deployed, it'd be a good, good starting point as well. And the last book I'm going to talk about is a cookbook. I am a big foodie, so anytime a new cookbook comes out, I'm all over it. And this is the Texas Food Bible. Um, this is by Dean Fearing. He is the father of Southwestern cuisine. I don't know who elected him that, but he is. Um, he also won the James Beard Award as the best chef in the Southwest. He spent 20 years at the chef at the mansion at Turtle Creek, which is a very swanky, upscale Texas restaurant. And he now has his own restaurant at um, the Ritz Carlton in Dallas. So even though he's used to cooking very highbrow foods, I think he did a pretty good job of um, making recipes for this book that common people can make. Now there are some recipes that have things like quail or venison or some of the more obscure meats, but I think most of them you could either translate to a different type of ingredient or they're also very approachable. And what I think is really cool about this book is he has some recipes in here that fall is here, Thanksgiving is almost here, you could pretty much do your whole Thanksgiving meal from this book and it'll have a Texas twist. Because his recipes have um, Texas flavors, Southwest flavors, you get a little bit of barbecue in there, and of course Tex-Mex. So he has a recipe in here, it's a Texas brine that you can use when you want to smoke your meats or even bake them in the oven. A lot of people will brine their turkeys for Thanksgiving in just like a salt water solution, but this infuses a ton of flavor and it'll give your turkey or whatever you want to make, quail, anything, um, really good flavor, even chicken. There's a jalapeno cornbread stuffing recipe, sweet potato spoon bread, butternut squash taquitos, which kind of blew my mind when I read that. It's like you don't think of taquitos and butternut squash being in the same thing ever. Um, and then Shinerbach beer bread, and Shinerbach beer is like Texas through and through. And then he's got this really awesome steak fair pecan pie, and this was the like overall high winner for the 1996 state fair um, competition. Um, he was one of the judges that year and the woman who wrote the recipe said, you can have it as long as you promise to put it in your restaurant every year during the state fair. And he has stayed true to that. So he gives that recipe. And I have to say, I thought I had the best pecan pie recipe, but after looking at this, I might have to try it because it looks really good. It uses actual vanilla bean in there, which I think would give it a really good flavor. So if you're a foodie like me, check out the Texas Food Bible. And that's it for nonfiction for this uh, video of book hooks. We hope you'll come to the Azel Memorial Library and check them out or go to your local library and check them out. And we'll see you next time.